All right, welcome back. It's time for us to take a look at our very first hot topic, government's policies and how they are affecting uh, climate change companies. I have been joined, we have been joined by Mr. Frank Eliania, Technology and Media News Editor at Business Day. Hello, Frank. Yeah, good morning, and it's always a pleasure joining you. Yes, you're welcome, Frank. I, I think the, the, the best place to start is to find out what Nigeria's policy, the government's policy, is on climate change today. Okay, so in uh, 2021, Nigeria actually came up with a policy on climate change, um, which um, essentially tries to align with uh, the global best practices on climate change, and uh, also to uh, help companies um, um, rearrange or say re-strategize their, um, their policies towards uh, becoming more responsive and uh, more responsible with uh, um, climate change. And of course, um, there, there are various arguments to support um, the move by the Nigerian government. Uh, if you've uh, seen the incidents of flooding that we have experienced in recent times um, across uh, the country, several places have uh, been submerged by rain and uh, um, you have incidents of uh, um, droughts um, in, in many places. Uh, so um, there is a need for us to start talking about uh, climate change um, in, in the country. But where are we now in that, uh, in that move? They, it, it's not enough to, to come up with a policy. Uh, how would you describe the implementation of that policy? So far? Well, it's, it, it, has been, it, it has been off and on, um, as with all things uh, Nigeria. Um, we haven't quite gotten the implementation part um, very well. But be that as it may, I'm an advocate for moderation. I, I feel that I, I, I feel that um, when we come to the climate change discussion, um, there's a need for us also to consider the fact that we have the uh, developmental challenges. Um, there's a lot that Nigeria ha has yet to achieve, and to achieve some of these uh, um, developmental um, challenges or to solve them. You, you will need more than just being a, um, a, a compliant country to climate change. You probably will need some fossil fuels to make that happen. Um, we, we know that uh, the developed world has had their day. Uh, they've uh, used fossil fuel to develop themselves. And uh, uh, currently, if, if I may, um, countries like uh, China, uh, uh, the United States, um, Japan, UK, and several others are actually among the top 10. Um, in fact, if I could go through the, um, the top five, the top five, China, for instance, um, emits 10.065 billion tons of CO2. United States emits about 5.4 billion tons of CO2. India, 2.6. Russia, 1.7. Japan, 1.1. And guess how much Nigeria emits? Nigeria emits uh, 100. And uh, Nigeria emits 126 million tons of uh, CO2. So if we're talking about the top 10, Nigeria is, is not even on that table and on, uh, not on that discussion. So it is often very important for us to try to balance it to say, um, yeah, we're going to try to be compliant. But to some extent, we still need, we still need um, uh, um, to do a lot with uh, fossil fuel. Um, you know, it's, it's something that you cannot just avoid. We don't have electricity, constant constant electricity. And if you want to achieve that, if you want to bring in energy, you can't do that just by depending on solar energy. You can't do that just by depending on, on the wind and also hydrogen because these things have challenges. There are, there are points where you get to um, your solar power will fail. So you have to revert back to your grid, uh, grid power. Um, so also, if you have uh, issues around uh, mobility, transportation, um, we, we can't just say, let's go to electricity cars or electric cars, because currently they are very expensive in the market. Um, and the income levels of uh, the average Nigerian out there is not up to par to uh, um, actually start acquiring um, electric cars. So there needs to be a balance. Um, with what we have and what and where we want to get to 
I also know that um, this, this climate change discussion is very um, attractive at the moment because of the funds that come with it. So you see Nigerian um, leaders go abroad and uh, make a lot of promises and then come back home and do, and, and do the um, other um, thing that they didn't promise. So I, 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 I feel that, um, yes, we need to uh, start aligning, but then also we need to also, start cons uh, also consider the fact that there, are, there will be an extent to which we can go um, to, to pursue the climate change uh, policies. Well, climate change discussion has uh, dominated discourse across the globe, and it is something that serious is a serious concern to almost anyone living on Earth today. Um, eco anxiety is a thing among so many people. Uh, maybe not in Nigeria, but in other parts of the world, eco anxiety is a thing. Uh, Canada is presently experiencing heat wave as uh, yeah. some other countries have experienced from time to time. And uh, Nigeria here, you've alluded to the flooding that we experienced uh, not long ago. However, uh, as much as we want to see these things happen, you know, policies that would encourage uh, climate change companies to thrive, we also will not be oblivious to the fact that politics will have something to do with it at some point. Because governments being supported by um, you know, fossil fuel industries may, 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 may have a bit of challenge or, you know, uh, a bit of challenge in making policies that be, uh, that would affect business uh, in court, yes. as it were, right? Yes, so uh, absolutely, you're very spot on. Um, I mean, you, you, can't, you, you can't deny the fact that we make a lot of money from our oil. All right. Um, Saudi Arabia makes a lot of money from its oil as well. And uh, um, some of these countries, you have Venezuela, you have Iran, even the United States uh, currently is among the top um, oil producers in the world. So um, everyone um, needs the oil revenue that, we gen uh, um, that they generate, you know, and that's also where it, it is a, a tricky balance for, for many countries also, including Nigeria. Um, you can't you can wish away you can't wish away the importance of uh, climate change yes but then also you can't also um, uh, um, forget the fact that you need to develop you need to come up at uh, um, to some level with these other countries that have already arrived you know um, we're not at the same level with the United States we're not at the same level with Canada um, and talking about heat wave they've been expressing heat wave uh, for a very long time. This is not the first time they're going to experience it. Maybe it has, uh, it has increased. Maybe um, uh, um, other, other natural um, disasters have also increased, you know. But then we can't wish away the fact that they have arrived at some point where um, they need to now start thinking about we need to do this for ourselves. But for us here in Nigeria, it needs to, we need to contextualize and ask ourselves what, what is really important to us. You know, and talking about flooding also, um, we can also um, remove the fact that some of our leaders have been very irresponsible in the way they handle flooding. Um, NAMED, for instance, have been issuing notices telling people this is when flooding is going to happen. But then you don't have this responsiveness from the government to say this is the action we're going to take. Many governors don't even um, have a plan of how they want to address um, flooding. For, um, there are issues around how, how, how do you build your roads, how, how do you build, uh, construct your, your sewage, how do you do your um, drainage. Some roads don't have drainage, some roads are, are done without it. So a lot of things wrong, you know, and then even some, um, some states don't even have roads. In some places you don't have roads and when flooding comes, those are just... Um, easy part for flooding to take over. So when we start um, constructing things or building things the way they're supposed to build, uh, the way they're supposed to be built, it, at, in the first instance, then we can now start talking about, okay, so we have built it, but we are still experiencing flooding. What else can we do? You know, And perhaps also this is also the, um, the best time for us to now start considering when we are building roads, how can we make it sustainable? How can we make it... Um, uh, um, compliance to some of the climate change um, standards that are coming out, you know, but we can't remove the fact that we need to 
develop our communities. We need to uh, um, give people um, a, um, a sense of belonging in terms of the kind of infrastructure that we put out there. You know, so it, we uh, we need these things like yesterday. We need light. We need uh, more roads. We need several things. You know, but flooding is it going to stop? I don't think flooding is ever going to stop. But I think we can reduce it by just taking proactive measures. Governors can start um, taking proactive measures, and with little things like uh, um, alerting the people, building shelters for them. So that when flooding happens, you can take them to those shelters. Later on, you can bring them back. You know, so issues around housing, we haven't even gotten our housing uh, um, uh, and problems correct. So those things need to be addressed. And we then know how we can take it from there. Climate change is important, yes. But for us in Nigeria, we need to um, contextualize what it is, what is the most um, uh, um, priority for us at the moment this priority is uh, because uh, climate change, when we're talking about climate change, uh, the people of Nigeria seem not to be catching on. They don't, like um, Maureen said, that maybe yes. not in Nigeria, because we in Nigeria, we don't, we don't think really much about it. We still fell our trees, we still burn uh, uh, bushes, we still do a lot of things. We even roast our goats and cows with tires and all that. So <clears throat> are, are we really taking it seriously? What do we need to do? What do we need to change? I think two things is education. We um, does need for more education, but then uh, um, you can't really blame people who are, are still doing some of the things that you talked about because um, if you're hungry, you won't be thinking about climate change really. Uh, um, if you can't uh, put food on your table for your children, uh, I don't think climate change will be the biggest issue that you have. Um, many people are still doing subsistent um, agriculture. Um, it, is like, it is like one of the, the um, largest mode of uh, generating food in Nigeria. So we, until we come to the point where people, uh, their first priority, their first instinct is not to survive, I, I don't think we're, we'll make that progress where people start connecting the dots and start thinking about how do we secure our environment, how do we um, not dispose west, uh, um, dirt where they're not supposed to be disposed, how do we ensure that we um, maximize the water that we have, and how do we ensure that our lands are, um, um, that we have plants, uh, that we plant things, you know. So all of those things are important, yes. But first of all, can we address hunger? Can we address um, uh, um, poverty? Um, if you ask me, I think um, poverty is like is like one of the major causes of climate change. Uh, um, it, because a lot of people are having to cut down trees because they need to use it for fire. Look at what is happening with their um, fuel price. So what you have ultimately done is for some people, they can't cook or they can't move around. They need uh, um, alternatives to bring food to their table. So they need now maybe to go and burn wood. They need to do some things, you know. So those are um, issues that people are facing currently. So once we can address poverty, once we can address um, food uh, security, then when you bring an education to somebody and say, listen, you need to do something about how you're cutting down these trees. The person can start listening. But at this moment, when they are looking for food on the table, when they are looking to um, uh, um, take their children to school, uh, when they are looking to just find a job, you know, it's going to be difficult. But education is important. But the most important thing to do right now is to fix poverty, to fix hunger. All right. One of the things that one begins to also wonder about is how climate change companies are helping to fight against climate change in the country. Yes. Uh, it's important for them, you know, to do that. Um, not only because it's attractive, it makes you look attractive uh -huh. to investors. Um, it's also sustainable um, in the future that we are entering, where the rest of the world is talking about it. So it will come to a point where if, if, uh, if people want to look at your books and they'll be checking whether you are sustainable, whether you are climate change compliant. Um, 
But then we also have to look at the peculiarities of the environment where they have to play. Um, they're playing in, the, in an environment that, um, that seem to not care enough about these things, you know, and that seem to, um, to be rent-seeking, that seem to collect from them more than it wants to give back. You know, so it's going to be difficult for them to balance it. They, um, even if they make it investment, um, it's like companies. I've seen companies who who go about you know planting trees. They declare, okay, we want to plant hundred trees or one thousand trees. And at the end of the day, um, nobody is there to maintain those trees. Nobody is there to water them. And those projects um, don't see um, uh, uh, on the light of day. So there needs to be first of all a culture that we want to do this and everybody's on board everybody has a buy-in of of everyone in the country there's a mindset that the environment is important there's a mindset that we want to we want to help nature flower and not to destroy it you know you want to have that kind of mindset um whatever you tell companies right now and uh, even if they go ahead and implement it will not be effective it, it, what will only make it effective is that everybody has a buy-in. It's not just the companies alone, but the government also needs to be seen to be doing the same thing. Would you know, we do um, have Ministry of Environment. One begins to wonder how effective these ministries are. Would yes, um, it, it is an important question that you asked. Actually, um, in the past, we have seen um, how some of these ministers are appointed. Some of them are appointed because they helped to um, make the election happen and the president just rewarded them by giving them um, those portfolios. So we end up not getting technocrats. We end up not getting the right people for, for these jobs. So when they come in, they just do whatever it is that they feel like that is what they're supposed to do and they leave. You know, so we don't make enough progress as we should. You know, one, when we start prioritizing the quality team, that should be in positions of authority, then we start having these discussions properly. But at the moment, I don't think anything is going to change if, if somebody who is a doctor or somebody who studied economics or somebody who studied uh, um, one, one course somewhere is made the Minister of Environment. You know, if you want this to happen, then you need to go for, look for the professional whose job, who has, who has had experience in this, in this uh, um, environment, who knows what it's all about, and who can articulate a vision for it. That's the only time you start making progress. And it's a no-brainer. It is why we see the CPM, for instance, playing the role of their Greek minister, playing the role of the minister of finance, playing because these ministers, most of these ministers come in and they just do nothing. They just sit down there, collect their salaries, or whatever kickbacks that they get, you know. So once we start prioritizing the quality team that we have in government, then we can start um, making progress. Well, I guess we'll just um, keep our fingers crossed and see if this new president is going to change the narrative and give us people who know the job as against to people who come and learn on the job. As we've seen of late with the last administration, the Minister of yes. Education, the Minister of Interior, even the Minister of State for whatever in Abuja, Festus Kiyamu, had also said that which he occupied, there was, he had no reason to exist in the first place. So let's wait and see, Frank. We want to see change. Hopefully, we have renewed hope. We've been given renewed hope agenda. So we hope that with this new renewed, uh, renewed hope agenda will give us a new Nigeria because that's really what we need. We want to see meritocracy enthroned and all this nonsense that we've seen played out would change for good. Frank Elianya, Technology and Media News Editor at Business Day, has been our guest as we took a look at government policies and how it affects uh, climate change companies in the country. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you, Maurice, and thank you for having me. All right, so it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a short break now and come back with our second hot topic. Stay with us.